Second set of facts, the time varying risk premium. When we looked at the first uh, set of graphs last time, we saw that stocks vary tremendously over time. So there's my stock returns. And those look pretty random, don't they? They look sort of like coin flips. They're not, if it's up today, it's sure to be down tomorrow. Notice that if it's up to, there's off, quite often two dots in a row up, three dots in a row up, two dots in a row down, three dots in a row down. It really looks like if it's up today, it's equally likely to be high and low tomorrow. And for many years, that's the way we thought of stocks. The premium is high on average, but it's a random walk. It's unpredictable. And there's a way to tell. We, this, finance is not about uh, taking things for granted. It's about looking hard in the data and seeing how it works. Our method for evaluating, can you tell whether the stock, where the stock market is going? Can you tell if returns will be high or low tomorrow? Is quite simple. We run regressions. So the typical regression is we run tomorrow's stock return or next year's stock return on any signal today. And we've run thousands and thousands of these regressions. So as a way of getting a sense, are stock returns, is there momentum? If stock returns are high, do they keep on being high next year? Or is there profit taking or mean reversion? All these fun things you read about in the newspaper, we can check. We do it by running a regression. So the first set of regressions runs next year's return on this year's return to see if there is predictability in stock returns. And the answer is a devastating no. The coefficient is close to zero. The t statistic of the coefficient says it's totally insignificant, even if it's there. The r squared is next to nothing. Stock returns look awfully like coin flips, things that are not predictable over time. Another way of saying the same thing, if we have a regression of this sort, then today's expectation of next year's return is just the right-hand side of that regression. So if the b equals 0, if b equals 0, as we seem to be finding here, the conclusion is that the expected return is constant over time. It doesn't vary. It's big, but doesn't vary. That was the view of the world for many years. But an exciting prod to theory is the new view of the world that, in fact, that is not true. There are variables that forecast stock returns. Let me show you one. This is taken from the discount rates reading. Here is the same regression where in the table we run stock returns next year on this year's dividend price ratio. And look what we get. A coefficient of 3.8. Uh, that's a big number, as we've seen. A T statistic of 2.6. And if you look out five years of 3.4, the R squared you may not think of those as big, but you soon will. In finance, R squareds like that uh, are, are, are quite big. Um, and I'll show you the other statistics in a moment. This next graph, um, titled Dividend Yield and Following Seven Year Return, tries to make that regression come alive. The blue line is the dividend yield, dividends divided by prices. It's, it's the opposite of the price-dividend ratio, which tells you something about the overall level of stock prices. Incidentally, it varies all over the place, which is weird. Why should stocks pay high prices relative to dividends in one year and low prices in another year? That's a big question we'll be thinking about. For the moment, notice the dividend yield varies tremendously over time. That's the blue line. The red line graphs what is the seven-year return from that year going forward. So the red line stops here because I don't know the seven year returns for the following years. Well, the picture of the graph is pretty devastating. If you buy stocks in like 1980, when prices are low, dividend yields are high, you get a very good return afterwards. If you bought stocks in 2000, when prices are high, dividends are low, you get rotten yields afterwards. And that correlation is very strong. This graph is simply illustrating the uh, regression, I have the five-year regression up there. That illustrates a seven-year regression. Uh, and you can see the correlation between dividend yields and subsequent long horizon returns is very strong. What do we learn from that fact? What we learn from that fact is that expected returns, the fitted value of this regression, 
do move substantially over time. R squared is in fact not a very good statistic for that. A better statistic for that is just how much do expected returns vary over time. So that's what the number up here in the table, 5.46, tells you the variation of expected returns. So look at what that regression is now telling us. It's telling us that expected returns vary by 5.4% over time. This, this little picture here is designed to get you a sense of what's going on. The average return is 7%. That was big. The actual return varies a lot, 16% to 18% standard deviation. What we're learning is that the expected return goes up and down, and it goes up and down a lot, 5.6%. It goes up and down almost by the size of the actual return. So expected returns, risk premiums, are big and they vary a lot over time. Why? We're here to look at economics, and you can start to see some economics. Uh, here's uh, you know, what happened in the 1970s when, uh, expect, when um, stock returns, uh, when all of a sudden expected returns got really high and stock prices got really low. The economy was terrible. Gee, what happened in 2008 when the uh, dividend price ratio again signaled high expected returns? The economy was terrible. So what we sniff here is that in bad times, people are unwilling to bear risk. But we need to, see, we need to make that into a model. We need to see if that actually works. Next question. Let's, let's go back to the issue, why do prices vary so much? What we're really seeing in this graph and the dividend price ratio is that prices are going up and down so much. Well, you might say, why are prices high? Prices are high relative to current dividends because everybody thinks there's going to be good growth and dividends will be high in the future. That's what you might have thought before you looked at the data. This next table, which is from the financial markets and the real economy reading, contrasts what happens when you try to forecast returns with what happens when you try to forecast dividend growth. You might have said high prices mean that dividend growth will be high in the future. Look at the numbers. 0.7, minus 0.4216, no T statistic, no R squared. Compared to the numbers for returns, 4, 7, 9, 12, 6, and 20 with big T statistics. If you said prices are high because everyone expects high future growth, you would be exactly wrong. Prices are high because you expect low future returns. This next graph kind of uh, illustrates the idea. The classic view is what you might have thought. Here I graphed a low price. If prices are low relative to current dividends, people would have said, well, that's because dividends are going to fall over time. In fact, that's wrong. If prices are low relative to current dividends, that means prices will indeed bounce back to some extent over five to seven years, uh, and you will earn a good return. That's a, a rather astounding fact. It is pervasive throughout finance. I showed you stocks. We'll look at it in stocks, bonds, foreign exchange. Everywhere you look, high prices correspond to low subsequent returns and are typically seen in business cycle times when people are willing to take risk. Low prices correspond to high returns and are typically seen in times of the business cycle when people are unwilling to take risk. This graph uh, shows house prices and rent. Houses behave the same way. No surprise, in the early 2000s, high prices were high relative to rents. Did that signal that rents would increase in the future? No. <laughs> that signaled that, uh, how can I put this politely, returns were going to be low for a few years. And that is, in fact, how it worked out. So let me summarize what we've learned here. The, uh, we've looked at the variation of the risk premium over time. First, we learned the risk premium was big. Now we want to know, is it the same over time? What we've learned is price dividend ratio forecast returns. That's one example of many, many variables that forecast returns. Therefore, from last time we learned expected returns are big. Now we learn that expected returns vary a lot over time. They're big in recessions. They're big in bad economic times. We've learned that this phenomenon is so big, it changes our view of the world 100%. Price dividend ratios don't, in fact, forecast dividend growth. 
uh, price dividend ratios, forecast returns. And that entirely changes where you think the variation in prices come from, which we still need to account for quantitatively. When we're going forward to theories, our basic theory will be price equals expected discounted dividend growth. Learning that risk premiums vary a lot over time teaches us that this discount rate will have to vary a lot over time. And that'll make our theory very, very interesting. So that's our second big set of facts. I hope you're really dying to get to the theory.